Sorry. Right, so, so uh, what are the chances? Of, so, so we have this uh, one seat in uh, in Wisconsin. I, I off the top of my head, I think that makes the uh, it eleven to fourteen in the Senate. Is that what it is uh, in Wisconsin? Mm-hmm. There's a legitimate. Yeah, eight, it's eighteen to fourteen. Eighteen know? to fourteen. Yeah. So there's a legitimate. It was nineteen thirteen. Yeah. So there's a legitimate chance in when twenty eighteen that that Senate can flip. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Uh, there is, because if this can flip, I mean, the way that we always look at these districts of, of, of all kinds is uh, look at the vote, look at the percentage for president. And, uh, boy, this one went for Hillary, so maybe Democrats can win that. And this one went for Trump, so it's going to be tough. Uh, this was a district that went for every Republican candidate for president for years. And uh, it flipped the, the the flip in the vote was about 27 points. You know, so it was almost a 20 point Trump district. Now it's a nine point Democratic district. Uh and if that that is it, it, look as mentioned before about the suburbs moving, if those suburbs moved, a thing that Republic so on election night in, in 2016, early on, Wisconsin Republicans thought they're going to lose the state, uh, in part because vote returns from the the counties around Mo- Milwaukee, including Waukesha County, were were kind of mediocre. I mean, like the, these are counties where they usually blow it up and and win by 40 points and they're winning by <clears throat> closer to 25 or and 30. If that continues, there there's districts they drew to be suburban Republican territory forever. Um, and if that does, if, because if, if, what ended up happening was that Hillary did better in those places and she did worse in rural Western Wisconsin. Right. If, if, if the Republicans do much there were some suburbs uh, the, the flip side of the that map that, that the president loves so much uh, where the country is really red and there's little islands of blue the flip side is most people live in the little blue things and if you democrats do slightly better in a lot of these suburbs the the, the those are often in these seats drawn you know maybe drawn to elect uh, uh, drawn for elect republican because the district went for romney by eight points um, those now look like they can flip. Uh, not everywhere, but even there were other elections last night that I, I wrote up for the Post, and uh, places where Democrats lost by 30 points before they lost by nine, or uh, those, those kind of margins spread across a lot of these states. It, it, it is possible for them to actually pick up uh, the Wisconsin State Senate hard, but possible, and it's possible for them to uh, make gains in, let's. North Carolina is a big one where they right. the Republicans drew these maps, assuming that nothing would really change uh, in eight years, that people wouldn't move around too much. They didn't assume the voters themselves would change. So, yeah, there's uh, this is somebody looking at all these maps. It's, it's kind of a way to keep it keep it straight and see where the next opportunities for Democrats are. So, uh, all right. So lastly, so when you look at this and you look at this now over the course of a year, right, and there's been these type of uh, special elections, do, is there... Is there a trend? Like, I mean, for instance, if let's say that Ossoff race was in a month from now, just Mm -hmm. based upon no other, you know, sort of just assuming all everything else stayed exactly the same. It's just that it happens to be later and all this time has gone by. Is there a sense that that Ossoff would have had a better chance now than then? In other words, is the gap widening is or or, or are people is there been any type of. Because it doesn't feel like there's been any type of, you know, like sitting here in my little, right. little tiny world, it feels like, okay, people, they're tired. There's a little bit of the, the enthusiasm maybe not be as intense as it was uh, this time last year. But when you start to see these numbers and people just coming out to vote, it doesn't seem like that's the case at all. It almost seems like it's going the opposite way. Uh, well, that's what I was saying before where republicans thought if we pass a tax cut and things are okay people are going to come around and say oh that was working for us and it might be disconnected from that the the i mean the one thing i know i will always point out about midterms where parties got wiped out economy was much better in 2014 than it was in 2012 and democrats got smoked everywhere uh economy was pretty good and it actually better in 1994 than it was in 92 democrats lost everything the economy was pretty good in 2006. I, don't, I mean, this is before the bubble exploded, so unemployment is around 4.5%. So the economy can be pretty good in the metrics, uh, but I think Republicans have this um, 
some of it's learned, some of it's ideological. Um, it's an ability to look at how people are feeling apart from whether their tax burden is high or low. Mm. And they don't really have, so they have this opening argument, which is that, well, we're not incompetent. We're able to pass bail, and this tax bill, bill gave you back some money, even though Democrats said you, it wouldn't. Uh, they got that, but on the rest of it, um, well, let's imagine your health care bill goes up, which is it, it's going, or the premiums are going up, uh, which it's going to for most people. Uh, let's imagine the cost of living goes up, which is something Trump used to care about. Uh, but apart from all that, let's imagine you're doing okay, but you're really just annoyed with the state of the country. Uh, because the, a thing that I think because of the Trump victory being a surprise uh, that Republicans do not appreciate is how unpopular the rest of the agenda is. If you're, once you're fairly comfortable, uh, you can vote against a party for lots of reasons. Right. And if you are one of these, I mean, I really think there are probably millions of people who might have voted for you know, some named generic Democrat in 2016 but, but thought took a chance on Trump. I mean, they've been off the train for, for, for months. And a normal president, I think, would say, well, that's a problem. <laughs> let, me, let me adjust my policy. Let me maybe, like, not... Uh, Hack in some of these conservative nominees for for, for, for judicial positions, or uh, let me not rescind this trans. It's all the various social issues that Republicans are losing sight of. Um, he's not doing that. So there there might be a pretty positive situation if you look at one economic uh, one economic um, category, and then everything might be pissing people off in the suburbs. Right. Everything else. Uh, it certainly feels like the case, and I just want to remind you, Dave, that. Um, Donald Trump only sees one color, green. That's uh, according to his... <laughs> that's that's the, the best possible spin. I'm, I'm, I'm too greedy to be uh, bigoted. That's, that was that's what, what we were say. just saying. That's what we were just saying. That's yeah. the perfect crisis management. You got to admit something that's <laughs> not necessarily flattering about yourself, but it's better than being a uh, racist. So... Hi, folks. Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL, and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.